Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's talk about how to find the derivative of this rational function using the definition of derivative. In general, finding the derivative for a rational function like this would be better using the quotient rule, but then let's say if we do want to use the definition of derivative, how do we find it? How do we go through the calculation? Let's get started here, okay? So first, we are going to write down the definition of derivative here. So we have f prime of x, which is equal to the limit as h approaching zero. Then we have f of x plus h, then minus f of x, and then all that over h. Okay, so what we do is that we are going to plug in the x plus h into all the x's and then also plug in the x, which is, well, actually just the original function, and then we'll, we'll start writing this. So now filling in the information, then we are going to get the limit as h approaching 0. So now what happened is that we are going to copy down this function, turning all the x's into a blank. So we are going to get a blank minus 4. Okay, actually, I think I need more space in that case. So blank and then minus four over and then three blank and then plus two. Okay, so what do we fill inside the blanks? We have x plus h. So that's what we need to plug into the function. And what happened is that we also need to subtract the f of x, right? So subtract the original function. So we subtract, just copy the function. So x minus four over three x plus two. Okay, so now the denominator is still just h, so we are just going to leave it for now, so just leave it like this. Okay, and then the next step, the next step is to uh, simplify this one first so that we can distribute the 3, remove all the parentheses, so that now just another quick step just to mostly it's just copying a lot of stuff. So we are going to get x plus h minus 4, and then all over 3x plus 3h plus 2 then just minus the original function so x minus 4 all over 3x plus 2 yeah, again denominator just h okay so now the next step the next step is to um it's to multiply the top and the bottom by the lcd of those two fractions right here the reason is that we can turn this complex fractions into just fractions so that we don't have fractions inside fractions so multiply the top and the bottom okay so that's what we are doing right now so multiply the top and the bottom by 3x plus 3h plus 2 and then times another factor, 3x plus 2. So see what's going on here. We multiply the top and the bottom by this. So that we're basically just multiplying by 1. And so that means we're not changing the problem. As you can see, we're not changing the fraction. So and when you multiply all this stuff to those two fractions right here, uh, like for example, so if you multiply this with the first fraction and then you can see that the 3x plus 3h plus 2 they will get cancelled so we're left with just the 3x plus 2 and then the numerator Is that okay so that's the that's how we clear the denominators in the numerator okay so let's continue so we are going to get we're going to get so 3x plus 3h plus 2 and that will get cancelled so we are left with just x plus h minus 4 Okay, and then we have the 3x plus 2 that didn't get cancelled. So 3x plus 2. And then now for the second fraction, there was a minus sign in between, so we'll just put it there. And then the 3x plus 2 will get cancelled with this 3x plus 2 here, so we are left with x minus 4 and this factor that didn't get cancelled. So we have x minus 4, that's the original numerator. And then now the 3x plus 3h plus 2. Okay, and then um, what do we have in the denominator? It's a lot of stuff. Okay, so there was the original h, there's also those things. So we have original h and then, and then uh, 3x plus 3h plus 2, 3x plus 2. Okay, so now what we do is that we can try to multiply everything out at the top. That will give us a lot of things that we can uh, simplify after we multiply everything out. So let's actually try that. Let's actually try to multiply everything out. And then let's see what happens when we multiply those things out. Uh, so we have x times 3x, we get 3x squared. 
and then x times 2, we get 2x. And then h times 3x plus 3xh. And then h times 2, we get plus 2h. And then uh, minus 12x, negative 4 times 3x, right? Minus 12x. And then negative 4 times 2, negative 8. Okay, so that's good. And then now what happens is that we are going to also just multiply this out. But then there is a minus sign right here that we need to pay attention to. So if you are to um, multiply that out, make sure that you put them inside parentheses and put a minus sign in the front so that we know that we got to distribute that minus sign. So we are going to get 3x squared. Okay, so multiply that. And then x <clears throat> times 3, 3h. So we get plus 3xh. Uh, plus 2x okay so that's x times 2 and then negative 4 times 3x negative 12x and negative 4 times 3h so we get negative 12h and then lastly negative 4 times 2 we get negative 8 and then so that's as you can see so many terms but it's okay a lot of them will get cancelled eventually it looks like it's going to be pretty bad here right but it it's okay you will see that magic will happen after that so just keep going then 3x plus 2 okay so now okay so see what's going on here if you distribute the minus sign here we can actually do it in the um in, in this step right here so we can write it just at the top so we actually get like the 3x squared Okay, and then distribute the minus sign. So we are going to get minus 3xh minus 2x plus 12x and then plus 12h. And then lastly, what do we get here? Uh, plus a, right? So that's all those terms. So now let's start doing the cancellation. So let's start doing the cancellation. So we have 3x squared. There was a negative 3x squared. They will get canceled. So we are going to cross them out. Okay. There was a 3xh. There was a negative 3xh. So we can also cancel them out. And then there was a, there was a negative 8. There was a positive 8. So we can cancel them. There is also, um, what do we get here? The 2x, right? There was also the negative 2x. So many things will get canceled. <clears throat> there is a negative 12x. There's a positive 12x. So cancel them. And then what do we have left here? So there was still a 2h. There was still a 12h. They don't get canceled. So that's all we have left, right? So just leave them right now. So now our numerator becomes so simple. It really just give us the what the 12, I mean the 2h and then the 12h, we get 14h. So we get 14h at the top. And then what do we have at the bottom? The bottom still has all those things, right? So just copy. So we have h and then 3x plus 3h plus 2 and then 3x plus 2. So now see what's going on here. The h's can get canceled, right? So we can cross out the h as well. And actually, because h is approaching 0, once you cross out the h, the 0 over 0 in determinant form is gone. So we can, after that, we can directly substitute in the 0 into the h. So as you can see here, so we have the limit as h approaching 0. So we get 14 over the 3x plus 3h plus 2, and then 3x plus 2. See what's going on here? We can directly substitute this zero into the h, and then what do we get? We get 14, 3x plus, plug the zero into h. Okay, so we plug the zero into h, and you see that we are gonna get zero, so we just get zero plus two. Okay, so that, becomes zero, right? Three times zero is zero. So that we just get this. And then we also get the three X plus two. So we get three X plus two. And so now um, you can see that three X plus two, and then that's also three X plus two. There are two factors of three X plus two. So we simply we can just put it together as 14 over three X plus two quantity square and so that would be the derivative for this function okay so it's a lot of calculation it's tedious calculation but now that's how we do it
Okay, so thank you for watching. Please share this video and subscribe my channel. I will see you next time.